And here's the facts. I think all of you know. Um, we are living in a time where, as everybody here knows, as a result of this disastrous campaign uh, finance decision by the Supreme Court on Citizens United. You all know about that? Yeah. One of the worst decisions in the history of the United States Supreme Court. And what that decision basically says is the wealthiest people in this country, they say, okay, you got a vote, you got one vote, but billionaires get a vote, plus the fact they can spend hundreds of millions of dollars to elect candidates who represent the wealthy and the powerful. We have a situation in where one family, the second wealthiest family in America, the Koch brothers, are going to spend $900 million on this election. $900 million. That is more money than either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party is going to spend. Does that sound like democracy to you? No! It's not democracy. It is a movement toward oligarchy. Yes. Yes. And you and I together are going to overturn Citizens United. And we are going to move toward public funding of elections where anybody. I want, you to, I want you to think about an American democracy, which means that any person in this room, and not everybody wants to run for office, but if you do, you know, whether it's the state legislature, House, Senate, whatever it may be, you can run for office whether you're a conservative, whether you're progressive, moderate, whatever it may be. You can run on the merits of your ideas and not have to beg money from millionaires and billionaires. How's that? And when we talk about what this campaign is about, it really is not complicated. What this campaign is about is people, I think, all over Iowa, all over America, basically saying enough is enough. Yes. This great country of ours and our government belong to all of us and not just a handful of billionaires. Yes. That's what this election is about. I am the ranking member, that means leader of the opposition on the Senate Budget Committee. I represent the Democrats, lead the Democrats on the Budget Committee. And here's what the Republican budget was about that passed the Congress. They controlled the Senate, they controlled the House. And you tell me, if anybody you know, whether they're Republican, by the way, or Democrat, thinks that this makes sense. At a time when 35 million Americans have no health insurance, they decided to repeal the Affordable Care Act, cut Medicaid by billions, with the result that 27 million more Americans lose their health insurance. No. No, 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 no. Now most of us think that health care is a right of all people. Yeah. We want everybody to have coverage. Yes. We are the only major country on earth that doesn't guarantee health care to all people. And what these guys did is throw 27 million more Americans off the health insurance. All over America, Working class, middle class families find it get harder and harder to be able to send their kids to college. All right? Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows that. Of course, the college is very high. We have presented an idea and introduced legislation that will make public colleges and universities tuition free. Yeah. Yeah. In addition, substantially lower interest rates for those millions of Americans who are carrying student debt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's our view. Their view in their budget was to cut, this is true, cut $90 billion from Pell Grants over a 10-year period. Yeah. Furthermore, in Iowa, in Vermont, all over this country, we have folks who are working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. And because the wages they're earning are so low, they are not 
earning enough money to literally feed their families. I was in Des Moines a couple of months ago. I was at the farmer's market. And I spoke to a guy there who works with a church organization. And his job was to collect the food that was not sold at the farmer's market. And he brought it to an emergency food shelf. And I asked them what percentage of the people who go to the emergency food shelf in Des Moines are working people. He said 90% of them. So you have people all over this country who are working hard, but their wages are so low, they can't even afford to feed their families. You know what the Republican budget did? Cut billions of dollars from nutrition programs, which will increase hunger among the children and among the elderly in America. Those are not the priorities that the American people want or deserve. Now, these guys, the people who fund the Republicans, they got a whole lot of money. Let's be very clear about it. They have endless amounts of money. And I cannot begin to explain to you, because I work in Washington, D.C., the power of money over the political process. All right? The American people want to raise the minimum wage to a living wage. Democrats do. Republicans do, and that's why we're going to fight for a $15 an hour minimum wage. That's what the American people, every poll that I have seen, people say that if you work 40 hours a week, you should not be living in poverty. We can't get that bill on the floor because the big money interests say, no, no, we don't want to raise the minimum wage. In fact, many Republicans support doing away with the concept of the minimum wage. That's a Koch brothers principle. So in a high unemployment area, you can pay workers three or four bucks an hour because they're desperate enough to have to work for pennies an hour. That's their vision of America. Many of my Republican colleagues are going around Iowa and they're talking about the need to cut Social Security. Cut Social Security. Cut Benefits for veterans. My view is that when you have all over your state, all over my state, all over America, millions of seniors who are barely making it on 12, 13,000 bucks a year, try to think about it for a moment, what it's like to be 75, 80, 85 years of age, living on $13,000 a year. How do you heat your home in the winter? How do you buy the medicine that you need? How do you buy the food you need? You don't. They don't. They don't buy the food they need. They don't buy the medicine they need. And these guys want to cut Social Security, but at the same time, in their budget, they proposed over $250 billion in tax breaks for the top two-tenths of 1%. No. The millionaires and billionaires. So that's what this campaign is about. It's a, it's a campaign over national priorities and over values. Yes. And what we believe is that our government should be working for the middle class and working families of this country, not just for the billionaires. Yeah. Now, they have the money. You're looking at the only, one of the very few, candidates for president that does not have a super PAC. All right? I don't represent corporate America. I don't represent billionaires. I don't want their money. Right? The way we are going to win this campaign is what this event is today about. This is just extraordinary to see so many people coming out here today. We need your help. And let me be very clear and tell you what no other candidate for president will tell you. Yes, of course, I want your support to help me win here in Iowa and help me become the next president of the United States. Yes, I need your help. But what I will tell you, what nobody else will tell you, is no president, not Bernie Sanders or anybody else, can transform America and do what needs to be done for working families and lower income people and the elderly and the sick and the children. No president, not the best that you can imagine, 
can do it unless we have millions of Americans involved in a strong grassroots movement. And, that, and the reason for that is that you got folks in Washington who have unlimited amounts of money and power. And they say, well, President Sanders, you want public colleges and universities to be tuition free. Well, they won't allow that to happen. The only way that will happen is when young people all over this country, by the millions, say, you know what? We are going to get a college education regardless of the income of our family. And we will raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Not because I think it's a great idea, but because we have people all over this country saying we will not continue to work for starvation wages. We are going to raise the minimum wage. Look, all of you who have studied history understand that change, real change, whether it is the civil rights movement, the women's movement, the gay movement, the environmental movement, whatever it may be, real change never comes because some guy sitting in the Oval Office or someplace else says, oh gee, I think it's a good idea. That's not how change comes. Change only comes when millions of people stand up and fight back and demand their human rights. And that's what this campaign is about. So this campaign is not just about me. I need your help during the campaign. Yes, I do. But I will need your help the day after the election. When you go out and you see somebody who says, oh, politics is crap, they're all corrupt, so I'm not going to get involved. You tell them that if the Koch brothers are prepared to spend $900 million on this campaign, maybe they understand something that everybody in America should understand. Politics is real. It will impact every person's life. And if we do not get involved, they will control what goes on. So we need you help, not just during the campaign, we need you after the campaign to be part of a strong, dynamic, grassroots movement which knows what's going on in Washington, which demands that Congress start representing ordinary Americans and not just billionaires. That's what this campaign is about. Thank you very much.